you layer it all up and you start to forget it's paper. So you actually have to look closely to see what it is. And I quite like that when someone picks it up and goes, oh, is that paper? Uh, I'm Zach McLaughlin, I'm a paper artist. I live and work in London, UK. So I use paper mainly to create natural sculptures of birds, which are my main thing, and flowers, other animals. And I'm just adding texture on top of other multimedia sort of sculptures. Um, it's kind of a form of taxidermy, I guess. But, um, I grew up in a hamlet, so like a little, little tiny village. Um, I was in nature, kind of running around the fields and the garden. I think that's where the inspiration comes from. And you know, I now live in London, in the city. It's very different. I'm not obsessed with birds. I'm obsessed with nature and being in nature. And spotting birds is really cool. And I love it. Um, but I'm not like an obsessive bird man, as people call me. <laughs> I'm more of a obsessed with the details, nature person. So it's not really about collecting the, the birds or trying to create as many as I can, it's just trying to recreate what I see. It always starts out with researching whatever I'm going to make. I research the hell out of it really. I'll, I'll go online or in books and I'll search as many images of that, say it's the bird, so that I can get a real sense of how that bird's put together. So that then I can de deconstruct it, so I can feather by feather lay it out in my book, so I'll draw out every feather shape that that bird has, make sure I get it just right, because if you get bird lovers ordering a bird, they want it just right. I don't want to get complaints of the third feather's wrong or something like that. My next step is to build it off the page, so I've got to start from the body, and the body's like the main structure where everything's going to come from, and so the wings, legs, beak, eyes, everything's got to be attached to that body, and usually that body is made from wood. I'll carve that body, whittle it down, um, create the beak, the eye sockets, the leg holes, wing holes, all those different bits. I'll then create armature, so wire armature for the wings, if they're spread out, wire armature for the legs. It's really important to get the understructure right, because the paper, once you put that on, you can't change anything. Well, the last stage is adding all the paper on. So I will work from the tail up to the head, this is the plain bit of paper that sticks to the bird and the next one will layer up on top so you never see the messy side, you always see the nice fluffy bit. Um, and yeah, just build up the bird from there really. Um, it kind of just comes to life, all the feathers get placed. And then painting. So then the painting is the very final process. So I really enjoy that bit, all the details, all the fun colours you can get some of the birds. Um, and then a little bit of gloss varnish on the eyes and that's the final touch of life and then it's all, all done then. The length it takes to make a bird varies on the bird. So say like a little life-size hummingbird can take about 60 hours to create. Um, a life-size barn owl, 120 hours or so. Yeah, the balance is quite hard because you've got obviously your passion and what you want to make and then you get commissions of what you have to make. That's your bread and butter, that's where the, the money comes from. But those roots, it's amazing what comes from those roots. It comes back to the passion side, because you can make connections, people see your work that wouldn't see it normally. Um, yeah, so my commissions come from all sorts of people, I guess. The kind of art collectors, mainly bird lovers, actually. Um, so people have a favourite bird or come to me and say, can you make this bird? And I go, yes, I never said no, because I, I love making a new bird, it's really exciting. In my head I've got the idea of what I want to do, I've designed it, it should work and it will work, so I'll just go for it. <laughs> <laughs>